Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. If you've ever been in a situation where you struggled to pay for your pet's veterinary care, then you understand how difficult that can be. And it happens to pet owners every day. They have to make a choice between paying for the medical needs of their beloved pet or borrowing money, going into debt, trying to find a way to do that. And sometimes it doesn't work out. They can't find the money. They can't make it work. And unfortunately, in these instances, pets are sometimes euthanized because their owners can't afford veterinary care. Recently, the organization Waggle, their website is waggle.org, they have come onto the scene to help pets that are in a medical crisis. And it's basically a crowd crowdfunding platform similar to GoFundMe um, and Indiegogo, Kickstarter, the, the big name crowdfunding campaigns that we're used to. Um, it's basically crowdfunding for pets in need and pet owners in need. It is unique. It's m filling in a niche in the crowdfunding industry that I think is really necessary and it's something that is saving lives. Uh, today I was able to speak with Stephen Mornelli from Waggle and he tells me a little bit about the platform, um, why it was created in the first place, and if you need help or if you'd like to help pets in need, how you can go about doing that. Samantha, thank you so much for inviting me to your show. I'm pleased to get some background on Waggle and how I got started with uh, the veterinary industry and made him such a change in uh, the direction of my career path. I got started with Waggle about a year and a half ago, and that's when the concept for Waggle began. I had been working previously in the financial services industry for a number of years. I was trained as an engineer and worked in various fields from quantitative research to um, working on submarines and satellites and a whole wide range things that all have an analytical background, but after the financial crisis, I found that I really was at a point in life where I wanted to, um, quite frankly, make a big difference in the world and do something, you know, quite frankly, more meaningful than what I had been doing previously. Uh, the financial crisis um, caused me to leave New York, and I went to London and pursued a similar path, and was again working in finance. Um, only to find that the market had changed and it was, it was time to come back to the state. And I was working in the field of data science. And fortunately, I had the background to do that. But again, I found myself in a similar situation that um, I felt sort of uninspired. And I was really looking for something that resonated with me, you know, not only something I really cared about, but that dovetailed well with my background, which again was all things sort of analytics. And there was an article that came across my desk, and it was about the, the large technology incubator called Y Combinator. And they sponsored uh, over $65 billion in valuation of companies um, by making investments and helping these young technology firms get a, get a footing. And there was an entity that they had made a sort of first philanthropic investment in called WASI. And it was really caught, it really caught my attention because it was a crowdfunding platform, but it was dedicated to the specific vertical of human health care. And I thought it was really interesting because it followed this sort of paradigm of Uber or Airbnb where the, the organization or the business model took out so much of the, um, the friction and waste uh, in connecting people in their case that were in need and those that could help fund uh, those, those entities, those people. And I really, really appealed to me because having been in the financial service space, I saw so much sort of fraud and abuse and um, made it very difficult on donors to, to funnel these uh, funds to, to, to really work and make a difference. And their model was sort of a what they call a high-impact, low-cost model. In any event, the short of the story is I thought what an amazing place to apply it to something I was I cared about, which was animal welfare. And 
That's what I did. I really adapted and built out the crowdfunding platform, this whole model to help pets and their families in need and um, really bridge that gap to the people that could really make a difference and do this in a really high, in a efficient, um, high-impact way. And we could make a dent in the over 500,000 pets, right? Half a million pets, conservative number, that are lost every year simply because people cannot write a check. I think it's something that, you know, everybody can relate to. And, and what a staggering statistic that is that half a million pets you know, are lost every year because their owners just can't afford vet care. I think a lot of people, you know, at one time or another can relate to that. Um, even if it didn't happen to you, there's certainly been times in your life where you didn't, you weren't able to afford things and God forbid something had happened to your pet at that time. Um, you know, people wouldn't have known what to do. So um, I think it's something that everybody can relate to and everybody, um, you know, can understand certainly from a firsthand perspective. Yeah, and I think that was the sort of epiphany for me when if you stop and pause and think, okay, what if you take your, you're forced into a situation where you have to take your beloved animal that you care so much about? And I thought about this with my dog, Gracie. If I had to take this little 15 pound creature and hand her across the table, right? You give up your pet, you relinquish your pet because you find yourself in this situation, in many instances through no fault of your own, right? You're just in that situation. Fortunately, I never have been there, and most donors and people are listening to this, they probably say, oh my God, I've always been in that. I've always been able to write a $500 check with a $1,000 check. But what if you're really there? You really have to do that. That was the, that's the light that went on with me. I said, you know what, we can, we can always raise a limited amount of money, right? In the worst case scenario, it can really change uh, the... the the ecosystem is out there. What a fantastic way to, you know, take people who want to help and match them with people who need the help. That's the whole idea of Waggle, right? And and that's in its simplest form. Where it really gets far more interesting is, and we didn't know this initially when we started, but when you start to talk to the veterinary hospitals, whether they're large emergency and veterinary um, agencies or whether they're small practices, that started to unravel a conversation and lighten up about really what was happening in the industry and what's happening across North America. Um, when you start to understand the impact on the young professionals, young and old, doesn't matter which, that are seeing this every single day and are asked to do more and more, not only from a financial perspective, from a medical perspective, whatever it might be, the weight that bears on the industry is staggering. And this is why the veterinary industry actually has the highest suicide rate of any industry in the United States. Think, think about that for a second. Wow. That are, that are, absolutely, right? Some of the, the most caring people that went into this field, not for the money, but that wanted to, to give care and help and compassion to these, these dogs and cats and other you know, um, animals. And that they're being, you know, asked to do so much, in many cases for so little. And that's why it, there's a stress on these people that um, we, we soon found out that falls under not only if, if your listeners haven't heard the term economic euthanasia, which is the cause of it, um, but the compassion fatigue, which before I went into anything in the veterinary industry, I had no idea about. But to see and find yourself every single day or month um, having put down so many pets, that weighs on the industry as a whole. And so we realized that what we were doing was not only helping pet owners, but it was helping the vet industry as a whole by, by mitigating the number of cases that they see. Amazing. What a, what a wonderful thing to do. Do you know if there's anything else out there? I mean, obviously anybody could get on, say, like, go fund me and, and start a campaign. But do you know if there's anything similar to Waggle where it's just pet owners looking for help with veterinary bills? Well, here's the, point. here's the major difference that I want to point out to your listeners. If you go to, and I say this sort of tongue-in-cheek, if you go to a GoFraudMe, right, the GoFundMe that everyone's so familiar with, if you're a donor, where does your money go? You can't be sure, can you? You have no idea where that money goes. And that's the part from coming from a financial service sector, maybe so mad. Yes, the, the vast majority are probably going to the right place, but it makes me, it made me so mad, and it should be listeners as well, to think that so many of the people that are actually giving don't really have 
a lot of excess money themselves, right? So if they're giving on average a $25, $30 donation, and that's about that's what we see across the industry, that they're giving with their hard earned money and never really knowing where where it's going. People can pull a fake picture off the internet, they can make up a veterinary practice, and they at the, they, at the end of the day are the ones receiving this money. And you don't know if the pet ever got treatment, you don't know where the money went, you don't know if it went to a nefarious cause, that's the part that I really hope people take away. And the other side of it is, after you've given that money, as a donor, what's the impact that you make? Do you get, a, do you get any sort of feedback? Do you know the difference in that pet and their family, the difference that you've made? That's where Waggle does two different things. We only send the money to the veterinary hospitals. We check that the hospitals are real. We know the administrators. We do everything within our power to pass 100% of that money directly to that accounts receivable at that hospital. And then before we do this, we do our darndest to make sure that we get a pet update and we send that back. The results of the treatment uh, at some point in the camp, after the campaign closes, the best of our ability, and give that information back to the donor so it's a closed loop so everyone knows firsthand in that pet life and that family um, what difference their, their, their hard-earned cash has made. That's such a huge difference because like you said, I mean, whether you're donating to somebody with a sick pet, if you're just a passionate pet lover or sick children or, you know, somebody lost all their belongings in a house fire, whatever it might be, you know, on GoFundMe, you're never really quite sure did your money go where you want it to go. So I think that's something that everybody that donates can appreciate about Waggle. Thank you, exactly. And that's the difference. As far as we know, there's no one out there doing it. It's like we're trying to do it at the scale we're trying to do it. So, you know, we've talked about the pet owners. we talked about the veterinary hospitals. The other part of it I think is really important is not only are we geared and built for the veterinary industry, not only in how we ask our questions, how we treat uh, the information that we receive, it's specifically streamlined for all things animal welfare related. And I point that out because what we also learned very quickly is so many of our hospitals, just about every single one, works with two, three, four uh, animal welfare agencies that in, in most instances are already discounting the services that they provide. And there's a sort of symbiotic relationship here because when we start to get the uh, hospitals involved, they in turn get their uh, their local rescues and shelters involved, and that's what becomes really a community effort because the, the really the the whole is somewhere than the greater parts, right? Because once we start engaging all of these together, we can make such a big difference at the community level, grassroots level. We don't need to shotgun across the United States. If we, if we continue to build um, around the you know the family, the rescues, the shelters, the hospital. This is where we're seeing the momentum take off and that we're really making a bigger difference every single day. And and that that's why the hospitals want like to work with Wagle. Not only do they know they're gonna get the money they receive, but we're helping those we're helping them help themselves by getting these these animal welfare agencies involved. And we're and we're doing this earlier in the cycle before these pets suffer, before people find themselves in, in a difficult situation. That's the real power behind what we're doing. Absolutely. And talk about, um, let's say, either somebody needs help for their pet or would like to help uh, pets in need. We're going to link to your website. So anybody that's listening that wants to um, scroll just below the podcast, they can check that out. But talk to us a little bit about the process and how it all works. Yeah, it's, it's really straightforward. And, and when, you know, I want to highlight that it's waggle.org. Sometimes people get that confused, and as we get more uh, well-known, it becomes more obvious. But waggle.org, it's really as simple as whether you are a veterinary hospital, a shelter rescue, and in most of the cases that come in are right from the general public, any of these entities can sign up at Waggle. And that's important because we've made it very easy to do. And by making this registration sign up so easy, so say, for example, you're a pet owner today. You can, you can literally go to waggle.org. Within three minutes, you can register. And at that point, we, we know who you are. We can help you get set up. You begin your campaign if you are a person in need or your pet's in need. And you simply um, upload your treatment estimate. That's part of our check and balance to make sure that 
somebody's actually gone to a veterinary hospital, right? Did they have a treatment in hand? Um, it's, it's something that, uh, again, the, the old fraud of the world don't do. By uploading that estimate, we, we capture the veterinarian uh, administrator information and contact information. That sends an invite to the hospital. They may be an existing partner of ours. If they're not, they get invited to join. Again, it's really easy. Um, that facilitates the, the payment of funds when this campaign closes. The Pet Guardian uploads a little bit of information about their story and, and some pictures. Typical as you'd expect it in a crowdfunding platform. But here's something that I really want to highlight. So many people that find themselves in this situation, situation don't really have um, the wherewithal to write a compelling story, right? Because it's a very difficult situation. Many times they're under duress as it is. They just want to get their pet help. By asking only a few simple questions and making this geared to the, the veterinary industry, we're able to take professional writers that are on staff and help write this story in a way that brings this to life. And that's really key. We're helping these people, really, we're paying out of pocket to bring these stories to life so people can get their story out there. It's important because it helps not only raise funds, but we then make it very simple with a few clicks of a button. These same stories that, that our writers are crafting, with a click of a button, any, any pet guardian can share it to their Facebook page, with their friend, their family, and email where they're what they're called dynamic templates that are pre-written and configured and tailored to their story. And that way we can really help them help themselves by bringing this out and giving awareness to their, uh, to their need. Fantastic. And it is, um, again, you know, the website is right there if anybody wants to check it out. But it, it's extremely user friendly, which I like. Um, it, it's really easy to do. And then let's just say somebody... Uh, wanted to donate to a campaign, how would they go about that and, and what does that look like? You already touched a little bit about on uh, what happens after you donate, but um, what's the whole process look like? It's really easy. Just by going to laggle.org, you can click on any pet that appeals to you. In some cases, our donors have an affinity for whether it's either a dog or a cat. Sometimes it's cause. Sometimes it's by their own region. But any, of the, any pet that catches a donor's eye it's, we've made it so easy to donate. Our, you can be in and out of the process within minutes. And we wanted to make it so easy. And then um, we collect that uh, information. So when the campaign closes, we pre- you know we give that information back to the donor. But the donation process, I mean, it accepts credit cards of all different stripes. And um, it's really a, sim- a simple process. It is very simple, um, and that's coming from somebody that's not very tech savvy. Um, that's really great. You know, if you're just looking to help out, um, it, it's very simple to do. Stephen, thank you so much for everything that you do and for being on the show today. Uh, if there's anything that you want to leave our listeners with, what would that be? Well, I think that uh, you know we've covered the main pieces. The, the people we always get the question is, you know, how do you keep your lights on? We do a couple different things, um, but really by growing the platform, by giving awareness, by having donors come out and supporting us, whether it's waggle.org or the Waggle Foundation, that's something else we should talk about. But that helps keep our helps keep our lights on, right? It helps give momentum to this by sharing the story widely and frequently. That's the key. Um, but what we really aspire to do is to get to a critical mass where we have more and more um, sponsors come on to help underwrite this model. Think about, the, how, think about how we can change the, the face of crowdfunding. How by your donors participating and contributing to Waggle versus some of these, these well-known you know, crowdfunding platforms are out there, by helping us help others and in giving back to the veterinary industry, we are able to change the, what people typically think about crowdfunding, right? Because we're doing it in such a different way, with such a security and peace of mind for donors, if we get to a criti- continue to get to a critical mass, we are more and more appealing to the large sponsors, right? This is why Maddie's Fund, uh, Eli's Fund, uh, amazing organizations like greatergrid.org have stepped in to give, um, you know, to shine a light on what we're doing because it's so different. And the, the more that we can grow like this, the more that we can bring the real resources, whether it, you know, think about any, think about any large corporate sponsor. That's where we can really start to amplify this and make a big dent 
in those 500,000 pets that are lost every year. And that's our goal. When we launched WAGO, we built it in a way that, um, from a technology perspective, that we don't want to just do this, you know, to help a dozen, hundreds of pets like we're doing today or even a thousand. We want to be able to do this in the tens of thousands, right? That way we'll know in a few years, and I think we'll be there. That's when we know we have really changed and made an impact on, 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 in the world. For sure. And thank you again so much for everything that you're doing. This is just a, a fantastic organization and it's something that, you know, has the potential to help countless numbers of pets in need and, and pet owners that are struggling to help their dogs and cats. Um, so again, thank you and thank you for your time today. I really appreciate you uh, coming on and talking to everyone. Thank you so much, Samantha. This is uh, it's, it's such an important cause and I'm so thankful that you invited us on today and to share this with your listeners. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you guys have any questions or you'd like some more information, uh, as I mentioned, the link to waggle.org is just below this podcast. You can also jump on our website, theoryofpets.com, for more information and all my past podcast episodes. On our website, you can also leave any questions that you might have. I can try and answer those myself or pass them on to Stephen if it's something that he can answer as well. And while you're on the website, if you would take just a minute to leave me a quick review, that really helps me out. I appreciate uh, everybody that's already done so. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'll be back with another hot topic next time.